Eddie Hearn, so April 12th, Anthony Corla versus Vasil Lomachenko. Yeah. Um, let's talk to us about getting this kind of big fight for Anthony. So, well, I think it's well deserved. I mean, you know, there's a mandatory position for a reason. You know, Corla was a WBA world champion. Um, defended it against Ismael Barroso in a tough fight, fought Lenares twice for the Ring Magazine title as well, lost on points both times. First fight was a good close fight. And then he had a final eliminator, you know, um, to become the mandatory. He got it, and I don't think it was the fight that Top Rank really wanted, and I think Bob's made that clear. But he earned his position, you know, and when you earn your position, you have to be given that chance. And we thank the WBA following their rules and make sure he got the chance. I don't, I don't think there's anyone in boxing that wouldn't be an underdog against Vasil Lomachenko. Yeah, so that's, that's fine, that's just the way it is. But you know, you have to look at Collar's resume, look at his ability, look at the people he's been in with. He's a very good fighter, he's in excellent condition, and he's coming to win. So you know, he, he's also not uh, deluded. He knows how difficult this fight is, but he's had a great camp and he'll be doing everything he can to become world champion on Saturday. Is there more pressure on Anthony here over Vasil Lomachenko? How do you see it from Take a promoter's it. point of view? Is there more pressure for Lomachenko here? Oh, yeah, Anthony yeah, for sure. It's always, I mean, you know, I think like if you look at the last fight for Lomachenko against Pedraza, people were very critical of his performance. He won every round, really. But everyone's expected excellence from Lomachenko every time he fights. If you listen to his, you know, to Bob, it sounds like they might be overlooking Andy Crawler. I don't think Lomachenko and Papachenko are, are those kind of people. Um, so I expect the best Lomachenko on Friday night. I, you know, I, I think that uh, there's always pressure on him. Uh, there's no pressure on Crawler at all. You know, everyone's writing him off. No one's giving him a chance. So he can go in and that makes him more determined. He's a very determined individual. And can you talk about putting your fighters in a position to be in that big fight, um, like for example, Anthony Corlos fighting Los yeah. Angeles, Staples Center on ESPN, yeah. um, Anthony Josh is fighting in, in New York, um, yeah. The Zone. Let's talk to us about being able to maneuver those pieces and, and putting your fighters in a position to have that kind of fight. Sure. Well, listen, boxing's a game of snakes and ladders, so you've got to make sure that you move the fighters in the right way. Everyone's a different scenario. When you look at Joshua, he's the number one heavyweight in the world. It's a, it's a bit easier to maneuver him, but really there's no maneuvering with him. It's just he wants to fight everybody. With Lomachenko, it was more about, sorry, with Crawler, it was more about getting him back in a position to fight for a world title. The biggest fight out there for him was Lomachenko. So we had to work our way up the WBA rankings, get a final eliminator shot. Once he got that, he won it. He become mandatory, and then you know the rest was from there all about making sure that we got it quickly. You know, sometimes you can sit in a mandatory position for a year, and it can disrupt your career. Luckily, the WBA stuck to their word, and you know they gave him the opportunity. He's a, he's a former WBA world champion, and it's a good fight for, for Lomachenko. You know, it's a very credible defense, um, and uh, yeah, you know, part of the game is making sure that you have a plan for every individual person that you represent. It doesn't matter if they're making a debut or if they're the unified heavyweight champion of the world. And we have that with every one of our guys. And the two that you mentioned are great examples of how we're moving fighters in a perfect way. Yeah. Can you talk about the um, Anthony Joshua card? It looks like it's getting stacked by the day. Um, I'm hearing that Caleb Smith might end up on the card. Yeah, he's here actually. Uh, somewhere. Yeah, not, not here yet, but he's in LA. Um, he'll be uh, looking to fight on the Joshua card. We're also trying to make the undisputed female fight, which is Katie Taylor and Delphine Pearson. Uh, two of our young, big, big prospects in uh, Joshua Boatsy and also Josh Kelly could be on that card as well. So we're looking to announce the card in the next sort of week or so. And looking forward to Joshua's professional debut, you know. When we announced that fight, when you remember the situation, it was Wilder's fighting Fury and Joshua's trying to fight Wilder and, you know, he's fighting Miller, which is a good fight, but not really the one we fight. Fast forward a month, it's the best heavyweight fight of the year, you know? You've got Fury against Schwartz and you've got uh, Wilder against Brazil. Joshua Miller's the best fighter out of those. So we're in a great position. We've got a couple of thousand tickets left at MSG. It's going to be a sellout by the time fight night comes. And, um, you know, we're, we're really excited. I'm really excited to see Joshua perform in the US. I think it's going to be a great challenge for him, something different. And I expect a tough fight from Big Baby Miller. You know, I've seen how hard he's working. I know how much he wants this. And it's, I think it's a very dangerous fight. Yeah.